Hi, I'm John the MedPod Engineer Termel, and yesterday we got the official government media Alan Young line on what the Svetkopoulos decision means. So, from my blog at my Termel Yahoo group, uh, it's titled Alan Young and Ken West Distort Svetkopoulos MedPod Win. So, the distortion shouldn't survive but the last time these guys got together it did so this will be an interesting story to see what happens alan young and ken west distort svetkopoulos medpot win so let's see how the svetkopoulos case is being spun to the rest of canadians from the crown's memorandum to the supreme court of canada we know they feared that the svetkopoulos strike down of the mmar meant one greater possibility of diversion by bigger grow-ups, and two, six no-law years by Svetkopoulos, like two no-law years by Parker. Over and over, they fear the f that fewer, grow, uh, fewer larger grow-ups are harder to police. Har, 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 nyuk, nyuk, nyuk. And the real fear of no law back to December the 3rd, 2003, like no law from October 2003 back to Terry Parker Day 2001. That's the real fear. The six years of invalidity, like the two years of invalidity. So, the true fear is losing all their ongoing prosecutions, like the last time they lost 4,000 against me in one shot. So the real story here isn't grow-up concerns affecting dozens, it's constitutional concerns affecting millions. So let's see what Canadians hear the Svetkopoulos victory means. National Post, Saturday, May 2nd, 2009. Headline, Legal Haze. Health Canada has obstructionist approach over medical marijuana. Well, Canadians better get ready for the Can West Haze explanation. Hard to understand. By Shannon Cowrie. Well, Shannon Cowrie was the prostitute who distorted the Parker Hitzig et al. Consolidated Appeals back in 2003 into the Hitzig Appeal story. So when the Court of Appeal changed the style of cause to Hitzig Parker and others, it was seamless that the public didn't hear about the Parker Hitzig case at all. While it was called Parker Hitzig, until it was no longer called Parker Hitzig, but Hitzig Parker. Shannon and the Court of Appeal completely shut original appellant Parker out of the story to write case law under the respondent's name Hitzig. So, just search for Parker and Shannon Carey at my blog in the year 2003 to see his part in distorting the real import of the Parker, Hitzig, and others' appeals that resulted in the 4,000 charges being dropped. The picture caption in the story says about 400,000 Canadians use marijuana to deal with chronic pain, yet fewer than 3,000 have received official approval from Health Canada. So, according to Justice Letterman in the Hitzig case, that's proof it works. That's 1 in 133. For an engineer to have 1 in 133 bridges fail would be a disaster. But for 1 in 133 to get covered is what a lawyer judge like Letterman calls a success. <laughs> so, Shannon Curry says, It was nearly 25 years ago that Jamaican dance hall reggae singer Frankie Paul crooned. Canadian people love the tushing ping as he exhorted them to pass it over in his breezy ode to the joys of marijuana. The musical sentiment was expressed long after the Dane Commission recommended in 1972 that marijuana should be legalized and regulated like alcohol. Whether accompanied by a reggae backbeat or the more formal findings of the Royal Commission, the conclusions were the very same. There should be fewer restrictions on marijuana access. Actually, they promised my generation decriminalization and Trudeau and Chrétien let us down. And they didn't promise less hoops to jump through to get it. So, Shannon Curry, decades later, the Canadian people are arguably farther away than ever from legally passing the Tushin Peng. Well, if you believe the Hitzig decision resurrected the law, yeah. And Shannon was present back in 2003, helping publish Alan Young's case that the Hitzig case had brought the law back alive. So, Shannon Curry, about 40,000 people are still charged each year with simple possession. I've been using 50, only 40.
according to the Statistics Canada. Criminalizing possession was upheld by the Supreme Court of Canada in 2003. No, it wasn't. On the grounds that the state must be permitted to use the threat of criminal penalties to stop the vulnerable people from self-harm. So, the truth is, notice that he's using the Judas Goat Mel Mulavine case again from 2003 to say the Supreme Court of Canada said the prohibition was currently known to law when the court really said that the government could prohibit a controlled substance. We agree they say they never, wait a minute, we agree but say they never did since they were in, invalidated by Parker and Krieger. Of course, that argument is being heard in the courts of justice, not in this court of Can West distorted public opinion. Kari. The government of Harper is again proposing stiff penalties for even small growers, reintroducing legislation that died in the last session of Parliament, but has always been part of a tough-on-crime agenda. Yeah, and if they're reintroducing a new prohibition under Section 4, I'll have to visit Parliament Hill again while the prohibition is invalid. Probably on the last day, though. Kari, it's in the field of medical marijuana, though, that Canada has seemed particularly intent on limiting access, even though other nations in the West are moving in the opposite direction. There are an estimated 400,000 Canadians who use marijuana to deal with chronic pain and other ailments, yet fewer than 3,000 have received official approval from Health Canada, which has formally conceded there are legitimate medical benefits from marijuana. As well, it continues to file appeal after appeal whenever aspects of its maze of medical marijuana regulations are struck down by a court as being unconstitutional. And each time it was struck down by the courts, the prohibition turned off, was off. And each time it was struck down, it turned off. So that on and off system, turn off, turn off, that's what you get when you get judge-made law instead of parliament-made law. Marijuana advocates suggest there's a disconnect between the actual risks of the substance and what the public's being told by police and po uh, politicians. Well, more and more the public realize they're being lied to about a herb that causes zero deaths. Sadly, law enforcement agencies have done a fairly good job of scaring the public, said Alan Young, a law professor at Osgoode Hall in Toronto who represented many people seeking greater access to marijuana for medical reasons. And I see Shannon working with the professor saboteur again to spin away from what's really going on. So how is our court klutz going to try to turn a win into a loss this time? Kari, those court battles have consistently struck down obstacles to obtaining a legal supply of, for medical users. And each time the medical pro the prohibition had been turned off when the flaw is discovered. And then they fix it and the prohibition comes back on, according to the on-off theory of law in Canada.